Hey, welcome to this radio video and uh, here it is my review of the Texan PL680 receiver. I've used it enough to have an idea of how this receiver compares with others including uh, I've compared this to my Texan PL600 my Texan um, also compared it to my uh, sorry Degen DE1103 and my Grendig G5 compared signals, compared reception, different um, receivers and so um, and listened all evening yesterday going around the bands uh, upper lower side band and amateur bands uh, going in through the uh, international broadcast bands and so on so what do I think of this new Texan PL680? This is a receiver that's not been available for that long. It arrived early 2015 and um, so I um, actually decided to buy it because I was in the... I was looking at a new receiver. Didn't want to pay too much for a receiver so I didn't go to the PL880 because it's too expensive here, it's more than 200 Canadian dollars, that was, that was a little too much for me. So um, settled on the PL680 because the uh, shortwavelistening.com website was, uh, gave it a good review and I decided to, uh, why not, to try it and update my, uh, my old PL600 with, my, uh, with this one, the PL680. So, first of all if we look at the receiver we have the power button right here. We have a, the time button. We have timers to A and B, but they can be set. So two timers are possible on this receiver. You have the keypad button here. You have the buttons here for the uh, memory pages, AM, FM, the shortwave bands. You've got on the right side here uh, the light button snooze button it's also a step button so if you want to change the tuning steps fast slow and um, kind of intelligent they call it intelligent um, and I'll come back to that in a few moments uh, here you have the memory and the scan buttons if you want to uh, recall or um, you know register a memory of a frequency and you can also scan the bands you've got the air band you've got single sideband button, the synchronous detection button and here you've got uh, the FM stereo and the bandwidth, the AM bandwidth of the receiver. If we look on the right side of the radio we have the tuning knob, we have the BFO it's very nice because the BFO has a little dent to let us know we are centered on the BFO and I, I love that. This is a great idea to have this little dent to let us know where we are in the BFO setting. And the volume control right here. Uh, of course you've got a nice big speaker. It's about the same size. Actually it is the same size as the PL600. And um, actually the casing, this casing is the exact casing of the PL600. They just put a new receiver inside. On the left side, you've got also buttons. You've got the, uh, first of all, here the antenna jack, where you can plug in an external antenna. You've got a gain button, which is DX, normal, and local. You've got the tone, treble, and bass. You've got the earphones, and you've got the power adapter uh, in the back. Nice little door to put your radio at an angle which is always cool you've got the battery compartment here and um, uses four AA batteries alkaline or rechargeable right now it's the Texan batteries that are included that I've put in the radio but uh, I did test it a lot and I tested it with alkaline batteries uh, for the first few hours at the bottom you have a little uh, stand here so when you actually pull this out You've got two little feet here so you can actually put the radio even very very straight up if you don't want to put it at an angle which could be useful sometimes when you put it on a shelf for example. Um, on the top of course you've got the telescopic antenna, nice long telescopic antenna and it's uh, pretty cool for that. This is a long wave, medium wave, short wave 
and air band receiver. So it goes from 100 kilohertz way down the long wave band to and through the medium wave band, 9 or 10 kilohertz spacing available that you set up for Europe or North America and has a full shortwave spectrum from 1711 to 29999 kilohertz. It has single sideband which is very nice, upper and lower sideband and uh, which is cool by the way because it does have separate uh, sideband so when you actually put the radio on some frequency and you press sideband you've got upper and lower sideband you don't have to play with the BFO to try to find what sideband it is it has separate upper lower sideband that's really cool synchronous detection also upper and lower synchronous detection Synchronous detection is a feature that is not available on a lot of receivers but it's very useful when it works well because what it does is basically replace the carrier with a station that on shortwave is often you know going up and down up and down so it varies a lot so what it does is it replaces with its own carrier and it prevents the signal from actually uh, wobbling up and down in strength and so on and really does improve uh, on the quality of the signal when it's used in um, you know good conditions um, the synchronous detection on this radio is very good I've got to say I've got a DJ DE 1106 here that loses lock on this re on the, the synchronous detection uh, quite easily uh, even on weak signals, it is surprising how the uh, synchronous detection works on this Texan receiver. And, you know, the only thing it does is when a signal is really weak, it's going to unlock. And when the signal comes back, it actually locks back really, really fast. Um, I must say, one of the best synchronous detector I've seen in a receiver. Uh, that's for sure. Single sideband ease of tuning is amazing. I mean, you just find yourself some signal. I don't know if I can have one here because I've, uh, I'm close to a computer. So uh, if we put the upper sideband, let's try 0051, for example. Yeah, that's the thing. A little too close. And this one doesn't propagate well at this time. So uh, anyway, check my videos. I'll be posting lots of videos of... Uh, the usage here. Um, so single sideband tuning is very easy thanks to the center dent and it's very good. Uh, it's actually better than the PL600 and I'm going to tell you why. My PL600 when you tune a single sideband signal sometimes when there's are very very strong signals on the band it tends to be kind of fluttery, a little wobbly, so it's, it's like if somebody is talking but is trembling at the same time. And I don't see this on the PL680. And you can see that the USB, the upper sideband, lower sideband on this radio, it is much better than on a PL600. That I can tell you. Um, so, and, and that's pretty much where I'm going to compare it, by the way between the PL600 and this PL680 receiver. As for reception, um, reception, I have a set of, you know, what I call beacon stations. These are the standard stations that I use for testing a receiver. Uh, first in the FM band, art, then might have been this VPR station, and you see the antenna is actually completely uh, completely closed and I can still receive it and this is a very good FM radio uh, it's probably not as good as my Grendig G5 but it is Website's record is part of a series that shows four an amazing FM radio that I can tell you is very good in FM is it better than the Texan PL600 I would say probably a little bit but not by a lot. I mean, the FM portion of my Texan PL600 is quite good also. So uh, I'd put it at least at par, maybe a little better. This station is more than 100 miles from where I live and uh, it's received really, really well. The overloading in the FM portion also is surprisingly uh, low. Even when you extend the antenna, 
uh, compared to a lot of my portable receivers, it doesn't overload that much in the FM band and that's quite cool also because uh, I do a lot of listening on the FM band. Uh, for example, 92.9 here. This is also a 100 mile away station and it's actually coming in, booming in well. 99.9, .9, uh, 99. This is another one. This is another one. This is the buzz. This is also a very far away station. Giving you the idea that this radio is actually very good on FM. And uh, I, I would probably see myself DXing FM band stations with this receiver because it's very good on that respect. FM is in stereo through the earphones. So you just plug in a set of earphones. There are earphones included with the radio. Unfortunately, they're very low quality. I don't know of any shortwave receiver that comes with good earphones anyway. Uh, you know, get yourself a good set of earphones or, you know, do like I do. I've got an iPhone and it already comes with okay uh, earbuds. Plug your iPhone's uh, earbuds in here and it, it works really well. Uh, sound quality is fantastic. Lots of bass, lots of frequency response on the FM if you're listening to music. And uh, frankly, the speaker here is much better audio than on the PL600. The PL600 has a lot of distortion in the audio pretty much everywhere. Um, uh, you know, the PL600, the only thing that I give a negative side on the PL600 is that the audio is harsh and difficult. Not on this Texan. This Texan receiver has fine audio, uh, maybe a little bit on the bass side, so you know, a, like the low frequencies are maybe a little too much uh, sometimes but you know it is much better than the PL600 so uh, in, in that respect it's really good compared to the PL600 on the audio department. The medium wave band uh, is kind of another story. It's an okay reception but there's really a problem in the uh, medium wave AM band. The sensitivity of this radio on the medium wave band is not as good as the PL600. And actually in the shortwavelistening.com website they do say that they kind of found that the medium wave wasn't all it could be and it is not all it could be. Um, I don't know why but it seems to not be as sensitive and as good as picking up uh, distant stations and my beacon that I use for that is 580 CFRA and uh, although it does come in it is still noisier than on most of my receivers it is still a problem to receive uh, compared to a lot of my other radios even very cheap radios so if you want to DX the medium wave band, this PL680 is not that good on that side of uh, the spectrum. The short wave bands. How do the short wave bands? Because, you know, first of all, pretty much everybody here will use this radio as a short wave receiver, uh, mostly, but, you know, it's good to have. Oops, I'm going to have to go under here. Um, the short wave receiver is actually very good. It's one of the great, great shortwave radios that I've used. Um, if I could find, for example, here. We need to be very, very alert and very, very WWCR. Light touch on this world. Even this down for application. In a very noisy very environment. God is telling me, maybe God is telling all of us. And this Audio's great, reception's today, fantastic. Time, uh, if you kick in, for example, edge. the synchronous Thanks. detection. So what do we do? Well, I'm thinking this. I need to make sure that I only get involved in things that build up my faith. See, man, this really in this case, and in many cases, by the way, the synchronous detection improves a lot on the signal quality and um, in the audio department mostly. So, um, you know, it's a good shortwave radio. 
Is it better than my Texan PL600? That's where I'm not really sure because when I compared both at many many stations even weak stations I can tell you the PL600 receives all of these at the same single string pretty much I think this is on par and pretty equal to the PL600 on shortwaves reception what gives it an edge what gives it an edge is the fact that the audio is better and that you can use the synchronous uh, selectable sideband to improve so that's where the edge is because on the receiver itself uh, pretty much the same I listen to the same amateur band signals I listen to the same stations on shortwave um, on both PL600 and 680 and I can tell you without if this radio did not have better audio and did not have sync I'd say pretty much the same thing but like I said the edge is here S the synchronous detection and the better audio gives an edge a little something more to this radio and actually makes listening to shortwave stations easier on the ears that's good like all receivers uh, well first I'm going to just end with the fact that you also have on this radio something that's not on the PL600 the airband the airband is included here on this receiver and um, I've I you know I've compared it to the Digen DE1106 which has airband uh, but you can't really compare this to so as you see this is an airplane um, it receives well on the airband but I can tell you that when you use a good quality scanner or a good like for example my ICOM ICR20 uh, it's not up to par with you know a very dedicated receiver that received the airband but you know if you live near an airport it does the job you'll just you know go through the frequencies through the airband and it it's gonna work you know it's gonna give you these signals but there is a little bit of lack of sensitivity I would say on this uh, receiver for example here on 28 megahertz I have an ATIS or an automatic uh, information station it's easily received on my ICOM ICR20 but there's no trace of it here I did hear it while going through the house at some point very weakly in the background so it shows you that it's not super sensitive on the airband but it does the job of listening to the airband so if you are near an airport um, you, you'll hear planes that's for sure on this radio uh, it's just that if you want to have a dedicated airband radio this is not going to be the radio to use it's you know here for casual listening but uh, nothing fantastic about it but it's cool you know it's, it's nice to have the airband the airband goes from uh, 10, um, 118 to 137 so 118 to 137 megahertz which is a complete airband basically and um, you know as you just heard there was a plane it does the job at receiving airplanes and stuff like that uh, audio is good on the airband now um, like all receivers there's not only good things to say uh, there's no perfect radio uh, what do I have negative to say about it because that's also important to know of a radio uh, the negative side is one when signals tend to be weak for some reason um, the audio sometimes is also weak and even if you put the volume control at maximum setting it's still not that loud so if you're outside listening to a weak station you actually will pump the volume to maximum and I'm not sure that 
outdoors it's going to be strong enough on weak stations. It's very weird that it does that. Uh, it, it's as if when signals are weaker, the receiver is kind of... Uh, it's like if the AGC or the automatic game control inside it doesn't pump enough juice to make an audio level that's correct. So it's kind of weird in that sense. This is a very, very weird, and it's the first time I have this phenomenon on a receiver like this. It's kind of not really understandable that it does that. It's really, really weird. Um, one of the other little weird things is when signals are very weak and they, you know, pop in and out in reception. It also has a weird way of handling it. Instead of, you know, kind of slowly going to zero and still keeping like a noise level, it's like there's a minimum signal that actually will make the receiver react and the station just pops in. And then it's okay, if string signal's strong enough, there's no problem, it will go up and down and up and down, but if it goes below that little threshold where the minimum signal required is there, the signal just kind of vanishes instead of really going towards zero. It's as if, instead of going, you know, if I, I put it from zero to ten, it's like if the one is missing. So the signal is going to go 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, and if it has to go to 1, well, it's 0. There's one, it's, it's very, very weird. You have to experience it to really know, and I, I, I'll try to uh, make a video with a weak station to show you what I mean. But it's, it's very bizarre why it does that. It's as if the detector inside, below a certain threshold, the signal just, boop, removes. Now, of course, you can add, you know, bigger antennas and stuff like that to have better signal and it's going to compensate, but I'm wondering if you want to DX with this radio, what that will actually do. Uh, it is kind of weird and uh, I'll try I'll try to post a video of, of that uh, for sure because it's a very, very weird way of uh, working on a radio. I must say. Doesn't do it everywhere, but it does it, and it's kind of weird. Uh, so this is WWV 15 megahertz popping in and out. Um, the other thing that bothers me a little on the radio is on the Texan PL600, when you use the light button and you hold it, it goes through a cycle where it's going to light down then light back up and it's permanent so you can have a permanent display light and I gotta tell you Texan you have to do that you have to continue having that possibility of giving us a display light because I am one of those guys that likes to have this lighted all the time in the evening you know in the daytime we don't care because in the daytime the um, the display is big enough so with light you see everything but at night time I like having the display always turned on and that bothers me not to have that possibility now that said of course the display light is 30 seconds it's quite long and longer than a lot of radios that have display lights but I want to have a, a, a real always on display light I like that um, one thing that's cool is that when you actually press a button or tune, the light turns on automatically. So if you're in the dark, you don't have to press the light button to have the display. You just press a button to do something or just, you know, go through the, uh, just, you know, tune around and the light displays, the light goes on. So this is Radio Romania. And now I'm synchronous detection upper sideman works really well. The headline, the 
regional cyber security summit, an event attended by experts from 17 European countries and the United States, thanking him in the press. One of the things that also I kind of uh, have a little difficult, I, I have the impression that this radio is slightly noisier than my PL600, uh, but not always and not on all the bands. I don't know if it's electronic noise coming from the circuit board, but it seems to be a little noisier for some reason. Uh, when listening to stations, but you know when you get really strong station it works really well um, and um, I don't know I can't it's kind of difficult because from you know sometimes I would listen to a station on my PL600 it seemed to be pretty much the same even sometimes noisier on my PL600 sometimes it would be this one um, I don't know if it's because of the difference in handling of signals between the receivers, but uh for Wednesday and The joint environment of and legal committee by the chamber of deputies on Tuesday. Now um a small annoyance I would say is the fact that when you cycle you have to cycle through so when you uh listen to single sideband you press once for upper, once for lower once come back to AM mode. Uh, once in the sync detection, same thing. Once for sync upper sideband, once for sync lower sideband, and another one to get out of it. So uh, these are min minor annoyances, but it's uh, often the case where I'll you know click too much and I actually cycle one click too far, and I'll have to cycle again to go <laughs> to the correct. Uh, setting, but uh, these are minor annoyances, I would say. Uh, tuning the single sideband signals is an easy task and superb thanks to the center dent that the BFO has, which is pretty good. BFO works well, pretty pretty much centered. Um, I've tuned a signal that I knew of an actual frequency, and. Uh, like um, the weather on 10.05.1 uh, upper sideband and I heard the New York radio last night and I would uh, tune it and it's uh, not totally centered but slightly off but just barely so it's pretty close to being centered uh, on the BFO here uh, a lot of people that's one thing I want to uh, say in the negative comments I did read a lot on this radio on different blogs and it does seem that a lot of people are complaining of off-frequency displays. Mine doesn't have that. I've really really listened closely and tested it closely and mine doesn't have that but I've seen some YouTube channels with people complaining of the 1 kilohertz, approximately 1 kilohertz off display I tend to think and there's enough people complaining that I tend to, tend to think that either they did a batch that was kind of no good or there's some quality control problem at Texan on this one. Uh, so that you know just that would probably prevent me from saying to someone to buy it because of the number of people that complain that it's off. And was I lucky or is it because I've bought a lot of receiver from the same guy, which is Anon Co. I bought it from him. It's always that person that I actually use on uh, eBay to buy radio receivers. Um, you know, I don't know, but mine is okay. But it seems that there's a lot of there that aren't. So uh, that's where I'm scared of saying, yeah, you should buy one. The other thing is if you have a PL600, a PL660, I don't think it's worth the price to buy this one. Uh, your PL600 is fine. Your PL660 also. Um, what's the difference between the PL660 and 680? I haven't found any yet. I don't know if anyone knows, but I've looked at the specs. They look like pretty much the same receiver. Maybe this one is kind of an updated version. Um, I think it was shortwavelistening.com that said that apparently it would have a little more sensitivity. Um, I would 
be curious to see that because I don't see really much difference between my PL600. So I don't think there would be very much compared to the 660. So if you have a 600 or 660, or if you have a good shortwave receiver, uh, you know, it's not necessarily worth it to get this radio. I got it because I decided I want it and also because I'm gonna actually give my PL600 to my nephew that started listening to shortwave thanks to me and has been enjoying that and wanted a receiver with single sideband. So I thought, well, I'll get this, which will be an updated version. I'll get synchronous detection that I wanted to on a receiver, and um, which is very nice here. Um, apart from that, two bandwidths on the radio, uh, you know, wide and uh, narrow. Uh, they're just perfect. Uh, for the single sideband signals, it's maybe a little wide, but it's actually not, not bad. The wide selection is actually quite good, um, well chosen, you know, to prevent interference from stations on an on, on adjacent frequency. But I can say that the narrow setting actually works well, even if you want to listen to a station, um, you know, in the narrow mode. It's actually good enough that it works well uh, enough to uh, to use in narrow mode even on a uh, international broadcast band, uh, which is quite good. Uh, as 2000 memory, so if you want to program a lot of memories, there's a lot of space. They're divided in between the different bands, but a total of 2000 memories. It's uh, it works by pages. So when you actually go through the memories and stuff, you get the pages. So when you uh, press, for example, you've got page zero, page one, and so on, you can actually uh, m let it scan. So it's going to scan for signals if you want and stop. There's an autofill memory if you want on this. So if you let it scan, you can actually have the memories automatically get filled by signals that it's going to find. Uh, now I'm just with telescopic right next to a computer, so it's not really, really going to work that well. But it's a nice feature to have, you know. Uh, battery drain, I've, uh, you know, I've used it for about uh, 15 hours on alkalines since I have it. It's really, really been on and I mean, even while I'm doing other things, I've left it on on some stations and uh, battery drain seems to be nice, but I'll have a little more detail on that. And by the way, this is a review and I'll have kind of an update on this. I am going to post in about a week uh, an updated information video on this receiver. Uh, you know, whatever things that I find and uh, whatever maybe weird things I haven't seen yet that happens and so on. And of course I'll have a lot more listening experience uh, on it. As for the design, the radio is nice. If you have a PL600 at home, you've got already this radio on its looks. Uh, displays nice, it has the, um, first it's nice and big, it has the separate clock, this is fantastic, I always enjoy a receiver that has clock and frequency displayed at the same time, it's always nice to see what time it is. Um, battery indicator, there's a uh, signal strength indicator that's maybe a little too generous, but uh, you know, it's nice to have a signal indicator for any uh, signal you receive. Um, and of course, it's very easy to read. The uh, backlit is good, so at night it's easy to read. Once again, I would have enjoyed having a backlight that stays on all the time. Fortunately, it doesn't on this one. Uh, included with the radio, a nice carrying pouch. Uh, very, very nice. Probably one of the most beautiful carrying pouches of any receiver, which is this. So you can actually put your receiver in here. It's imitation leather, so it's some kind of vinyl or so, but it's very, very nice. Very soft, looks like almost like a book. And a very nice carrying pouch. Comes with four AA rechargeable uh, NIMH batteries. Unfortunately, they keep giving us 1000 milliamp hour batteries, which is kind of a little low in uh, what it is. You know, today we should have like 2,000 milliamp hours. 
because it means that you know at 1000 milliamps the radio is actually not gonna have too many hours of radio listening with just that so uh, get yourself a good set of uh, rechargeables instead and uh, you know can use alkalines also four AA batteries are in here um, somebody was you know I saw a comment of someone saying well you know it's sad it doesn't have a lithium ion rechargeable in here and you know what I actually prefer having regular batteries in a receiver all the time you know why because if you go DXing and you don't have any other batteries to replace that uh, battery what happens is that you don't have anything to replace it because it's an awkward battery that goes in here I prefer a radio that has a uh, possibility of AA batteries because they're easy to find anywhere you are you can find AA batteries it's always nice to have those so uh, you know I prefer that than having these lithium ions batteries uh, like the PL880 for example uh, of course lithium ion do last a long time and if you're just gone a full day it's not a problem but if you've gone many many days um, you know I, I, I'm not sure I really like that type of uh, battery then again you know I've got an ICOM ICR20 that has lithium ion and never missed anything but uh, at least they give in the R20 they give this little plastic thing that you can put AA batteries in case you don't have any other batteries to put in there so you know something that's not available I believe for the PL880 so my overall uh, my overall um, rating on this radio is that it's a good receiver and um, you know sensitive works well synchronous detector fantastic upper lower sideband listening fantastic a little bit noisy maybe I'm, I'm, I'm gonna test it a little more some few awkward things you know like the signal dropping off instead of going really low and going to zero uh, things like that are kinda weird but I am I know that it's gonna be probably one of my main receivers this summer it's a uh, good radio good FM rather you know weak medium wave but uh, I'm not much of a medium wave listener so it's not that a problem that big of a problem for me um, but shortwave's good, FM's good and um, overall a good receiver the only negative that I would say to all of you out there thinking should I buy one the fact that I've seen a lot of people complaining about the one kilohertz problem um, will prevent me from saying yeah go ahead and buy one because I'll be scared that you'll buy one and come back to me and say hey I bought one because of your review and I've got one kilohertz off and I'm mad as hell so be warned some of these are defective in that way um, but I'm happy to have a good one but from what I see on sh on the, the internet, there's a lot of people complaining about that. So uh, hopefully, if you ever buy one, you'll have a good one. Or maybe check with the uh, the seller. Make sure that you have a good one. Uh, that's for sure. So that's my review of the Texan PL680 receiver. Short wave, AM, medium wave, FM, long wave, and airband radio and uh, with 2000 memory and uh, pretty pretty good upper lower sideband synchronous detector and uh, an overall okay radio uh, I will say so uh, if you've got any questions on this receiver let me know and I'll try to answer as the, the best that I can and uh, I'll be testing more so look in a week or two on my videos I will have probably something called like Texan PL680 update where I'll give more details of uh, the radio itself and what I think and um, finally if you've got a PL600, a PL660, a DGN D1103 or a, uh, a Grandic G5, uh, one of those radios you really don't need the Texan PL680 
the only plus value, like I said, that I uh, find is its synchronous detector compared to the PL600. And yes, truly, you know, some, some better audio uh, on this radio also. So uh, take care and I hope you enjoyed the review. And uh, look, in a week or two, I'll be uh, posting an update, that's for sure.